Hello friends, so Godzilla X Kong The New Empire came out all the way back in March and three months before that we got the masterpiece Godzilla Minus One. Technically speaking, in nearly every single way, one of these movies is better than the other. Hey there movie lovers, welcome back, it's your movie buddy here, ready to dive into one of the movies on the shortening list of movies that I need to catch up on. Whether you're a longtime subscriber, follower, or a new face, I am thrilled to have you here. If you're looking for detailed plot breakdowns, you won't find them here, but stick around for my spoiler-free thoughts and honest opinions on the movies I've watched at the theater or maybe one that I streamed at home. You can also find timestamps in the video's description so that you can jump straight to the sections that you're most interested in. New reviews drop every Friday, so hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow on Spotify to stay updated. Got a movie that you want me to review? Drop a comment on YouTube, send me a DM on Instagram, or let me know on the podcast. And yes, my Instagram will be updated eventually. So grab your popcorn, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button, and let's jump into today's episode on Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. Set three years after defeating Mechagodzilla, Kong has established his new territory in Hollow Earth and searches for more of his kind. On Earth's surface, Godzilla continues to maintain order between humanity and giant monsters known as Titans. The pair must team up to face a colossal threat hidden deep within the planet, challenging their very existence and the survival of the human race. I usually try to tackle the theme of the film up front, or at least the theme as I understand it, and I love how effectively the new empire conveys the theme of finding one's place in the world, finding where you fit in. This idea is well conveyed through characters like Kong, but I was really captivated by the relationship between Gia and Dr. Eileen Andrews, Kaylee Hoddle, and Rebecca Hall, respectively. I love their relationship and how Gia's character is given more screen time and internal conflict. This serves to strengthen the bond and understanding between Gia and Dr. Andrews, all the while Gia is given the opportunity to find her place in the world. Moving on to character development, I know I just hyped up Gia, but the kid with the best character development in this movie is Suko, the mini Kong. You might think I'm joking, but I'm absolutely not. If you've seen the movie, and if you agree with me, feel free to back me up in the comment section because I am not wrong. When we first see this character, we quickly get an understanding of who he is, and to see his journey throughout the movie to who he ultimately becomes had my full attention. Visually, the film excels. The whole movie looks great. As usual with films nowadays, the CGI is pretty consistent. Most of the time, we get really incredible CGI and standout moments, and sometimes we get some funky moments that look weird. There is so much CGI throughout this film, and I think overall, this movie looks really good. Of course, we're talking about the CGI, and I know you're thinking, big monsters. But give me a second, I want to give the locations some time to shine. I rewatched 2021's Godzilla vs. Kong, and that movie looks great. It still looks great. Super saturated. I always thought Hollow Earth looked cool, and I think the new Empire grounded that look while also introducing more unique locations that were really immersive. Additionally, we do spend quite a lot of time in various locations that really do transport us to this world with how richly detailed and massive they are. Okay, now we can talk about big monsters. The various kaiju in the film look incredible from a design standpoint, and again, how massive and intricate the creatures are. Thick American Godzilla is always looking like a 10 out of 10, but we're going to focus on Kong. He really is our main guy, and we spend the most time with him throughout the film. I absolutely love how expressive he is. It's almost cartoonish in terms of exaggerated expressions from time to time, but I love that. I love that this movie leans into how over the top it is, and that makes it so much fun. I love that we get so much more of his personality, and because he's so expressive, I think it's easy to understand the character. I love the close-up shots, wide shots, body language, and when he's trying to communicate, and of course, the action. All of these elements together really make Kong a standout character. On to the acting. Rebecca Hall as Dr. Eileen Andrews is a gem. I think we can all agree on that. I love her acting. She's convincing as a doctor, scientist, and as somebody who's trying to connect with their daughter. Speaking of daughter, Kaylee Hoddle as Gia. 
I thought she was fine in the previous film, Godzilla vs. Kong. She played a cute kid really well. I honestly think she's significantly improved since the last film, and the new Empire really gave her character so much more room to grow, giving the actress more opportunity for range. I also didn't know until I was working on this episode that Kaylee is a deaf actress, and I think it's really cool that the casting director was specifically looking for a deaf actress for this role. Moving on to Dan Stevens and Brian Tyree Henry as Trapper and Bernie Hayes, respectively. To be honest, I didn't realize Dan Stevens was also an Abigail. Looking at both roles, I think he did a great job. Trapper is a much different guy than Frank, and he's very convincing as both characters. When it came to both Dan Stevens and Brian Tyree Henry, I saw some comments that said they had a hard time delivering the comedy. I honestly was laughing so much during this movie in general, but I actually thought both of them were funny. I liked seeing Bernie trying to record his podcast, film his vlog, and trying to convince Dr. Andrews that he should go with them on the mission. There is so much comedy from Bernie and Trapper that I think translated really well. When it comes to the writing, the story, and pacing, I wasn't super critical. I think it's all really good. There are so many different action sequences in this film, and a lot is done with fantastic CGI. The humans are there, that's fine, they tell us what we need to know, but Kong is the real star and he holds the story together. The soundtrack is good. Let me elaborate. I like the music, but the weird synth wave music and other lyric music seemed so out of place. I do love the music, it just felt like an odd fit most of the time. The more traditional sounding score, however, is fantastic. There's layers that add to the emotion and an intensity that emphasizes the action. Now, I don't get to add this section very often because we've been talking about a lot of standalone films, but this time we get to talk about some comparisons. I'm just going to talk about the previous installment Godzilla vs Kong briefly. I think you might be disappointed that the group of human characters that are basically on Godzilla's side of the story don't play a role at all in this movie. I did like that the last film kind of flip-flopped between the human groups. I will say though that if they added them in this movie, I think it would have been way too much. That said, this does leave Godzilla feeling like an afterthought. We're starting to get into my final thoughts, so let's just dive right in. After going over some elements of the film, the real question remains, is it worth your time? In my opinion, yes, but, yes, but. If you're going into the new empire thinking you're going to compare it to minus one, you are already robbing yourself of a fun time. That's what this movie is. Monsters fighting huge CGI fight scenes. And if you're looking for more than that, then definitely look somewhere else because according to Wikipedia, Godzilla x Kong the New Empire is the sequel to Godzilla vs Kong and the fifth film in the MonsterVerse franchise also serving as the 38th film of the Godzilla franchise and the 13th in the King Kong franchise. There are plenty of movies you can go through to find the one for you if you don't think The New Empire is something that you can get into. I saw a comment online that said this movie was released too soon after Minus One. I think if you know what type of movie to expect, I honestly don't think this is an issue. I even said it in my Minus One episode that I am so used to thick American Godzilla punching everyone. That is all that is going on in these movies. We even said it earlier in the episode, big monsters fighting other big monsters. That's all we want from American films. And that's what they deliver. I think comparing a big CGI monster fighting fest movie to the masterpiece Minus One is an idea that will keep a lot of people from enjoying this movie. We're already venturing into criticism about the film, so let's keep it coming. Another review said Godzilla's role in the film was much smaller than Kong's. I mentioned earlier that Godzilla felt like an afterthought. I was very disappointed in the lack of screen time for Godzilla, but considering the story they were telling, having Kong front and center made sense. But as a fan, I was disappointed to see Godzilla spending a majority of the screen time charging and sleeping. Honestly, that's all I'm trying to do too. I definitely agree to that point and the review goes on to say that Godzilla is important to the story, which is true, but I still wanted Godzilla to have more screen time. I'm going to go back to what I said at the top of the video in nearly every single way, one of these movies is better than the other and if you've seen Minus One, then I know that film immediately came to mind. And you're right. 
But if you've seen the new Empire, then you know the same could be said for that movie. For all the opposite reasons. At the end of the day, minus one is better. I'm not going to say it's not. I'm not trying to get anybody riled up. However, Godzilla x Kong The New Empire is such a fun movie that delivers an exciting and rhythmic soundtrack punctuated with songs that sound great in surround sound. It's packed with adventure, giving us the opportunity to explore Hollow Earth and more. And of course, big monsters fighting other big monsters. I think if you're looking for an incredible story, a realistic and grounded force of nature in Godzilla, an extremely compelling human story that might make you cry, definitely made me cry, then stick with Minus One. On the other hand, if you're looking for a movie that features plenty of moments of Kaiju Smackdown with humans we really don't care about, you're a fan of the previous installments, you're not super critical, and you're open to just sitting back and having fun, then check out The New Empire. Have you had the chance to watch Godzilla x Kong The New Empire yet? If not, what's holding you back? Is it not your cup of tea, not your usual genre? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts after today's episode. And if you've already watched it, I want to know your take. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or did you fall somewhere in between? Share your thoughts, opinions, and reactions in the comments below. I'm all ears, and I cannot wait to hear from you. I saw a few comments from longtime Godzilla fans that said they felt like a kid again watching Showa-era Godzilla films. If you, like me, are not super familiar with the history, according to Wikizilla, the Showa era, or Showa period, was a political period in Japan which lasted from 1926 to 1989 under the reign of Emperor Showa. And there are 15 films in the era, starting with the original 1954 film, Godzilla. Another person commented that the film really expressed so much fun, camp, weirdness, and some cheesy but awesome writing of the time. Like I said, I'm not super familiar with the history, but I did see a few comments that all mentioned the Showa era, and I've said plenty of times by now, this is a fun movie that delivers on gigantic monster fighting with the humans at a minimum, and it's a little predictable. If you're looking for an intensely emotional story that's dialed to 11, Minus One is your film. But if you want to see a giant ape right on the back of a giant lizard, I mean, come on. Well, now that I mention it, the fact that it happened twice in this movie makes it so much better. Speaking of which, I did not give my girl Shimo her flowers at all during this episode. What a babe. I love the creature design, but when I heard the sound Shimo makes in the theater surround sound at home with the surround sound all the way up, chef's kiss. Sound designer needs a raise because she sounds so cool. She is 10 out of 10 second best girl. And if you've made it this far into the video and you think you know who the number one best girl is, you let me know in the comments below. Before I wrap up, I do want to share what movies I'll be reviewing next. If you watched the last episode on Monkey Man, then this might sound a little familiar, but I'm a little bit behind. The next movies we'll be talking about will be The Fall Guy, The Strangers Chapter 1, Furiosa, and then Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I'm just going to keep letting you guys know every week that I put in all the work for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I watched all nine movies, so I'm really, I am really looking forward to that episode, you guys. I'm still playing catch up, but when I am all caught up, I've got a bunch of podcast exclusive episodes lined up. Finally, I've got tickets for a couple of movies that I'm excited to watch in theaters, including Bad Boys Ride or Die, and one of my most anticipated, if not the most anticipated movie of the year, Deadpool and Wolverine. I do want to see The Watchers and A Quiet Place Day 1, but I have not gotten tickets for either movie yet. Also, have you guys seen the new trailer for Alien Romulus? Oh my gosh, it looks so good. If there is a movie that you're excited about and want me to review, let me know in the comments below or send me a message on Instagram at a.rocket.review. Your suggestions are always welcome and I would love to hear from you. But for now, a huge thank you to everyone who has stuck around with me till the end of the video. Last week, I shared my thoughts on Monkey Man. If you haven't checked that episode out yet, it's just a click away. If you're watching today's episode on YouTube, you can find the link to that review in the top right corner. And for my podcast listeners, that episode is available for you as well. Your feedback is always appreciated, so please share your thoughts on YouTube in the comments below, and if you're listening on the Spotify app, swipe up and let me know what you're thinking. Did you agree with my take on the movie? Do you have a different opinion? 
do you think Godzilla x Kong The New Empire was released too soon after minus one? Let's get the conversation going. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you never miss an update. For those who prefer on-the-go listening, follow me on Spotify so you don't miss out on our podcast-exclusive episodes. And hey, if you're on Instagram, follow me at a.rocket.review for sneak peeks and behind-the-scenes content, and honestly, that's just me going to the theater and watching movies at home. Feel free to hop into my DMs with movie suggestions or just to chat about films. Your support honestly means so much to me and your engagement helps our community grow. Whether it's on YouTube, the podcast, or on Instagram, your presence is greatly appreciated. So until next time, spread positivity, be safe, take care of yourself, and happy movie watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.